excited to be here tonight with one of my favorite punk rock hardcore artists of all time, Kevin Seconds. Kevin, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. And you guys just rocked the house here at Slow Brew in San Luis Obispo. What was it like to play here and uh, how did you feel the fans responded to you guys? Uh, it was great. The energy was amazing and uh, we had a great time and, and we've played here a couple times before and yeah, I yeah. think maybe this was probably my favorite time just because it was a uh, it was a Sunday night, and we were sort of expecting that there wouldn't be anybody here, and yeah. whoever showed up might be a little tired and stuff. You know, sometimes that happens, but yeah, yeah. no, it was awesome, man. We well, had a great night, great show. That. But for us, it's always about uh, being in a small club, yeah. right up there with the people. And, you yeah. know, sometimes there's 100, sometimes there's, you know, we've played in front of far less. So this, it's never about the numbers. It's just always about the quality and the, yeah. the spirit, you know, and the, yeah. the fun. So Which yeah. really holds true. I mean, going back to your guys' roots, I mean, really kind of being a very positivist punk hardcore band, the whole youth crew movement, I mean, really all about the crew. I mean, connecting with your fans, creating a musical community, DIY kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the kind of shows that you guys, is, is your lifeblood, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we've been around 34 years. Yeah. I was 19 when we started. I'm yeah. 18 when, I'm started, when we first started. I'm okay. 53 now. So, okay. you know, it, for us, it was just being young, bored, yeah. sort of listless. We didn't really quite have a scene that we belonged to because it yeah. didn't really exist. And yeah. we just started to hear about things going on around different parts of the world. And, yeah. and we just decided to pursue it and see what we could do within our own community. And we really didn't know what we were doing. We still don't really don't. But it was just, you know, it contributed to the, to the idea of getting together with other young people, other people that weren't. Uh, you know, they weren't so into just going and just partying, and yeah. I mean, not, nothing wrong with that if you yeah. if you're into it. But we were we, it was about the music and about the sort of soul of it, and yeah. it, we just kind of kept going that direction. You know, it's Definitely. like, and even as uh, older older mature men, you know, yeah. it, it's uh, it's just lasted in, in our hearts. You know, yeah. it's it's sort of how we pursue whether it being. We're parents, some of us, uh, running our own businesses, yeah. dealing with real real life stuff. You know, you sort of still feel like that. That punk rock thing sort of sort of still fuels you to do the thing. Yeah. So, and and I have a lot of older friends that that never were punk rockers who sort of hate when I say that because they're just like, no, oh, it's a bunch of bullshit. Oh. But <laughs> I get it. I understand why you yeah. wouldn't feel that way. But it's just yeah. uh, when you do, you do. You know. Well, I bet it's kind of cool, Kevin. I mean, going back to you know your roots again, kind of the the whole. Um, just the whole movement, the youth crew movement, I mean, espousing healthy lifestyles, not being super preachy about it, you know, but an element, kind of an affinity with other, like, straight edge bands, Minor Threat, other, you know, Bad Brains, a lot of other bands. You know, after all these decades, I bet that's actually kind of a, a nice legacy to look back and say, you know, our message was positive. Our message was about community building. Our message wasn't about just going out and getting wasted. And, you know, as a, maybe a father or, you know, an uncle, to be able to kind of entrust the next generation of music uh, lovers with some positive of messages I, I think that's a really awesome legacy actually well thank you and I and I think I, I agree too I mean I don't I don't know that uh, you know it's it's been weird because yeah. we we sort of have been affiliated with straight edge and yeah. I don't have a personal problem with it only because I don't do drugs or drink or anything like that but I I always did sort of have a, a problem with the uh, it's sort of the militant aspects of it and I, and I never liked yeah. the fact that it became sort of this macho overly just a little too aggressive and 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 you know i i never was comfortable with that but i do like the idea uh i loved when when minor threat sort of came out with their first record and they sort of were saying you know hey you know this is who we are and this is what we're about yeah. it was nice to see and meet other people that were sort of similar and you're like yeah. okay good you know i'm not just some weird freak ass teenager who yeah. just doesn't want to drink all day long you know i there are other things i want to do yeah, so sure. it was nice to connect with that and and uh you know if, if we've been influenced on on somebody then cool you know hopefully it's been a good one yeah so. well i think i think very many people out there uh th hundreds thousands millions maybe uh facebook kevin seconds at his personal home number 805 no i'm just joking but but <laughs> Hit him if you knew my number. That'd yeah, be funny. We won't it? publish that, but but definitely send some love and let him know the influence that he's had. And uh, Kevin, you know, we just talked a little bit about the past. I want to talk about today and your most recent album. Well, it's this, it, that's a solo record, and it's uh, it's all acoustic, and it's okay. quite different in the sense that uh, there's no electric instruments, and okay. and there's no really not a lot of, a lot of people. My 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 wife Allison sings with me on it. Oh, um, I've always had an interest in sort of folk and old country music, like country in the sense of like you know i mean even you know carter family and some of the really Sun, old stuff Sun yeah, yeah. The, you know uh and i grew up listening to it and when i was a kid i hated it because my father would play it and i always thought it was really corny old guy music yeah. Yeah. and my mom was also a rock and roller so that seemed cooler nice. later as i grew up i realized that the johnny cash records and all that stuff really had a, a profound effect on how i 
listen to melody and, and harmony and that kind of stuff. Um, so all along I've always done on the side, and it's been a strange thing because um, I've so toured around the world solo. I've done my own thing. Uh, it's it's starting. People are I think now finally taking it seriously. I think yeah. they re they realize I'm not just some like old hardcore kid that's trying to <laughs> you know jump on some bandwagon. Yeah. Um, I think it's weird. Be I think it's weirder for them because I don't I won't cut my ties off to the hardcore scene or the punk rock scene uh -huh. like a lot of guys that I know they're doing. They came from the punk rock scene and they're doing the acoustic folk thing. Yeah. Uh, they sort of have like created their own new thing out of it and yeah. sort of separated themselves and I sort of get it but I also it's not I'm not comfortable with that so um, yeah anyway it came out early in the year and um, I've toured on it and it's, it's it's a lot of fun I enjoy it a lot uh, it's a different kind of thing you know, obviously you know with seven seconds there's more people that come out to the shows yeah. there's more sort of like spirit and yeah. you know anthemic sing-alongs yeah, yeah. uh, it's much more intimate and much more raw and a little scarier actually but I, I like that challenge. I like the fact that it's just something completely uh, different to something do, you different. know. And, and I'd imagine there's, there's sort of, I mean, in a way, that's almost the most hardcore thing, man. To be yeah. up there on stage at a stool, <laughs> acoustic, that, that's like the <laughs> ultra, ultimate vulnerability. So if you're out there and you think you're some hardcore artist because you, you, you play hard, whatever, whatever, try going up on stage yeah. with a stool and acoustic guitar yeah. and face a crowd of faces and yeah. see see how you react to that right people who are who know you from what you've done for all, most of your life and yeah. who sort of want you to rise to that but you can't really do it on acoustic guitar so you yeah. have to find a new way to be intense and to resonate with people and it's um it's it's really hard i think i'm i'm i think i've i'm i'm at to a point where i feel comfortable enough to, to where i'm doing it regularly yeah. um but it is it's a challenge and, and it is it is a little it is a little uh, Hard, more hardcore I think than yeah. this is easy for me because yeah. I've just done it for so long and I yeah. I sort of get it and I'm 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 a, I'm a ham enough to enjoy the sort of like that attention for that hour long thing yeah. with the acoustic thing I tend to feel a little more vulnerable and kind of like I'm out of my element and I, f I sort of feel like oh shit maybe I've really stepped into something I you know so but again that's the most hardcore thing you can really do yeah, man so, I yeah. agree and I like it it's good it's good for my it's good for my soul I like yeah. doing it you know so that's very cool yeah. well um you know I've are you familiar with a lot of artists that are similar of that maybe from punk roots but then try to do the acoustic thing Mike Ness is a good example Everlast actually is doing yeah. this whole yeah, just acoustic thing. in Europe earlier this year oh, and really? yeah yeah yeah. Cool. yeah guys like Chuck Reagan you know he's yeah. got hot water music Tim yeah. Tim Berry from Avail uh, a, a lot of people do it, and they do it really, really super well. And I and I'm fortunate enough to get to play with them, and we've we've collaborated on things. And I, I think it's good. I mean, I know that uh, there's a sort of there, there's been a backlash from the punk scene because it's like, uh, it's regarded as like the next thing that a bunch of guys are jumping on. And and I I sort of understand it, but I think that. Uh, you can see the difference between you can see the quality and notice the di quality between the, you know, the people that are really into it, f f sincere, and the people yeah. that are just sort of doing it for yeah. fun and or for whatever. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a good thing. I think it's a. It, it also sort of reaches. It, it kind of connects punk rock, and I've always thought this uh, going way back. It connects current modern day punk rock and hardcore with the likes of Woody Guthrie and yeah. Pete Seeger and these guys that were, I mean, if we think we're political and we're activists, those guys were out, you know, they were out in the fields with the workers and civil rights marches and, and stuff. And they were getting blacklisted. I mean, the McCarthy era, yeah. they were getting... A truly scary time of, of, of this country. Yeah. So we're not, we're not doing anything particularly revolutionary, but I like the fact that it connects us to that time and... Uh, of course, you have Billy Bragg, who sort of is the bridge for all of us, you know. So. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. He's he's an amazing person, and yeah. Well, Kevin, I was looking at your bio a little bit and talking about kind of branching out and, and working with a lot of artists. I was just really amazed to see some of the some of my favorite artists that you've collaborated with through the years, played with John Doe, Jonathan Richman, and one of my personal favorites, Elliot Smith. Yeah. What was it like, especially with Elliot, man? What was we're coming up on, sadly, I think a little over a decade yeah. since his passing, but. I, I, I'm a huge fan. I've been a fan going back to when from the first record, and uh, I had heard stories about people that knew him uh, that he was very, very, you know, not a super open guy and stuff. Pretty, pretty shy, uh, actually, yeah, pretty right? Shy, yeah. and, and to someone to the somewhat to the point of being almost uh, uh, uncomfortably so, you know. So yeah. uh, I played a show with him in Sacramento. I was asked to open, and and. Uh, I, it was great. He was very sweet. I we only talked a little bit. I didn't know him very well. Uh, I had a mutual. We have a, a friend that uh, produced a lot of. He recorded his studio and stuff that we talked since then. But uh, he was one of those guys. Uh, I did my set, and I was still at a point. This was probably going on 15, 20 years or something. Where I was still really nervous with the acoustic guitar, and I I, I didn't feel like I played particularly well. 
he came on and just looked like a mess and was like trying to find his cigarettes and he's looking for his guitar yeah. and he looked like he needed help he looked like he needed someone to come up and help him yeah. he sat down on a chair this is this loud shitty bar and uh sat down and strummed the guitar and the whole room was packed just went dead silent and for the for an hour long he just went up and didn't address the crowd didn't look at anybody didn't really even you, sometimes it felt like he wasn't even f f aware that people were watching him he wasn't really present yeah. so to speak yeah. but every song was uh, amazing and heart wrenching and uh, I'll always see he's uh, I don't I don't ever know uh, who's I, when anyone asks me uh, who my influences are it's really hard for me to pick them but I would say in terms of songwriting and, and uh, the, the recording myself mm -hmm. kind of thing I think he was a really really big in, in, inspiration for me because of the beautiful records he made on no string budget you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so amazing stuff. Yeah. Well, Kevin, one more question for you. Um, you are a big supporter of a lot of things. Uh, you know, the arts. You're an illustrator, an artist. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit uh, from your um, kind of expertise or experience. I'm um, hosting a radio show. Uh, you host a radio show uh, called Sound Salvation Radio with Kevin Seconds. Tell us a little bit about that and uh, kind of the your opinion on the influence of radio. Uh, that's my, f I call it my fake radio show. It's okay. because I just do it on the internet and I do it whenever I want. And sometimes yeah. I literally do it when I'm driving. I have this little head set oh, really? and I, I, it's, it's, it's very, uh, lo-fi and it's yeah. very, uh, just, uh, whenever it happens. And driving, I mean, out of your van, so to speak, right? In that case, right? In, in the van. I mean, forget, forget all that stuff Henry Rollins said about, you know, the tour bus and the van, living out of your van. I mean, Kevin Seconds is broadcasting from his van. That's pretty hardcore. Without the, you know, the band, when I'm with the band, we get hotel rooms and stuff. But when I'm in this alone with just my guitar, uh, I sleep out of it. I, I've used it for a recording studio. I still, uh, I park my van and I, I do a, a lot of recording in it because it sounds great. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, my, the, I, I've actually hosted real radio shows. I, I had a, a, a weekly punk rock radio show on a commercial alternative station uh, back about seven years ago. I did it for four years, and um, it went really well. Friday nights, and I and I just they let me play two hours every, every Friday of whatever I wanted to do as long as I took the f words and the s words out of it, and um, and I it, it was a joy because I I got a chance to play. You know anything from drop dropkick Murphys and Pennywise to like Crass, which is like I never thought I'd get to play like a Crass song on commercial radio. Penis Envy, one of my favorite punk rock bands of all time. The most uber feminist statement, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I would I would just push it a little bit, and and uh, luckily the show was successful and it was at the right time. Uh, but I, I really got I felt like I got good at it, and I I did college radio when I was younger. Uh, I used to talk to my friend who had a show in Reno, uh, who didn't really know what he was doing, and 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 just inherited this show and did didn't know what to play. My brother Steve, the bass player of Seven Seconds, and I used to call him and request songs, and so, and he'd say, "Well, I don't have those records." So we would bring the records down to the, stu the studio, sit and make him play the songs. And finally, he just said, "Why don't you just co-host the show with me?" Which was ultimately why I wanted it in the first place. But I love radio. I mean, I don't radio. I think now is kind of a, a whole different thing, and it, it really doesn't have much to offer in this. And, and with satellite and internet radio, it's sort of like, but. I love the potential that it always had, and I think it's you know it's something that I grew up with when it was still r relatively good, and there was still free form and, and still community radio, and there there is still, but uh, and that's it's pretty much what I support. I'm really about uh, college radio and independent. I like uh, I like to just find. I, I have an app called TuneIn, and I uh, I just sometimes will just sort of like play Russian roulette with it and just find a station that I've never heard before, some station out of Nashville or New Orleans or whatever, and it'll be amazing. You know, almost every time. So. Yeah, I yeah, love it. Kevin, I, my show, 80s Inner Edge, is um, a lot of people listen in on TuneIn and record the show. So I'll send you the link. It may not yeah. be uh, up your alley, but it's, uh, you know, in my opinion, the best of 80s indie, college rock, UK and US indie. Real right. quick, 7 Seconds yeah. does have a new album that okay. came out four months ago. It's called Leave a Light On. There it's on go. Rise Records. Uh, we're very, very proud of it. Um, hopefully people will buy it, but we've also been saying, look, if you... The, our, the kind of person that needs to go out and download it for free. That's all right with us, too. Okay. Just just get the song, get the music in your bloodstream and come. Yeah. Next time we come through town, come and sing it with us. That's all we want. So. There we go. There we yeah. go. Well, thanks again, Kevin. It was a pleasure, and we wish you the best of luck in the yeah. future, man. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you, man.